All right. Speaking of that, speaking of assholes, let's talk about this first news item in 1980s news. Is it Caligula? Yes. <laughs> of course it is. Oh my yes. god. Oh my god. I'm, I'm sitting here like, which one is it? Which yeah. one? Is it? Yeah. It has to be. <laughs> so one of the yeah. first. <laughs> First Green Crush, one of the most controversial films of all time. Mm. Send it back to theaters, and yeah, we're talking about Caligula. What you may not know is that it, it, the folks behind it uh, were the men's magazine Penthouse. While Penthouse had had a, already a history of uh, helping fund some Hollywood films that are, are well known, including uh, Chinatown, The Longest Yard, and The Day of the Locust. The owner of Penthouse, Bob Guccione, wanted to make something that was you know, uniquely his own uh, and uh, you know, essentially uh, a porn that had feature film production <laughs> value. And so, <laughs> and to do that, he thought he would tell the story of the rise and fall of the Roman Emperor Caligula. I don't know, I, I, I guess maybe what little he knew, or maybe I can even say that I know about Roman history is sort of the debaucherous nature or some part of it. I guess. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's randiness, if you will. Yeah, I suppose. Yes. <laughs> uh, anyway, he employed mm -hmm. author Gore Vidal, who I only know for his books. I didn't know he had written this originally, at least, to write the screenplay, and Tinto Brass was hired to direct it. If you don't know anything about Caligula, Caligula except it seems like one of the most, you know, uh, sort of uh, most one of the most expensive porns of all time, it actually starred mainstream <laughs> actors, folks who are even bigger now than they were at the time, including Malcolm McDowell, Helen Mirren, Peter O'Toole, and John Gilgood. Mm -hmm. uh, eventually, uh, Bob Guccione gets dissatisfied with Vidal's script and Brass's editing because there's not enough banging in it. <laughs> oh my <laughs> and so he starts making some changes to some of the dialogue and some of the scenes and then those uh, Vidal flees he says I don't want anything to do with this take my name off of it the director either leaves or was fired as well uh, Guccione hires a, another person Giancarlo Lu, Louis to film this is post-production film additional scenes with hardcore performances that they're going to oh. then edit in, or that they then mm -hmm. edit in into yeah. whatever they already had shot. Okay. Which reminds me, this, this is not like best defense that we're going to talk to talk about later. Oh. Minus the sex. Minus the sex. Mm -hmm. oh. Anyway, it, in spite of the turmoil or because of it, it actually does pretty well at the box office. Uh, and they have different versions of it, in, in particular because some theaters wouldn't show the show the uh, uncut. Uh, form of the film. Mm -hmm, in right. fact, it still remains banned in some countries today. Huh. Uh, but despite its generally negative reception, it, it, it's gained, like many films from this era, right? This is a 1979 film. It gained a cult following. And either because of its, <laughs> you know, <laughs> how bawdy it is, yeah. just mm -hmm. outright sex scenes, or because, because some people literally praised its historical content. <laughs> I mean, it's, huh. Okay. Imagine getting this assigned for class, you know, you're, hey guys, I got a great uh, movie we're going to watch today. Uh, I've been talking about the Roman Empire. Uh, anyway, uh, it turns out though that um, even though we got a bunch of versions that have been floating around out there, you know, some with more or less sexual material, the original film that was, you know, being created by Vidal and Brass it has never come to light until mm. now. And actually, Ooh. Malcolm McDowell apparently has an uncredited role in creating, uh, the, was working with Vidal and, and them to create uh, some of the dialogue, some of the story. Oh. Anyway, we now got the newly restored Ultimate Cut, which is coming to theaters later this summer. So there you go, Kat. Hmm. Front row seats. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and according hmm. to its distributor, the new version sticks, quote, closely to Vidal's Original script, especially with the addition of a prologue that illustrates one of Vidal's missing scenes, created by noted graphic artist Dave McKean. And it, apparently, mm -hmm. they're claiming that they have a, nearly 100 hours of original footage that was discovered for the pro, uh, project well, that's never been seen before, relying on alternate takes and different wow. camera angles to reconstruct the storyline as it was intended. I... I Wow. I'm, if it's more like the way they wanted and has less sex, I don't, I, yeah. I don't know that you're going to get people flocking to the theaters necessarily. 
<laughs> Except me. I'll be like, okay, yes, <laughs> bring on the history. Yeah. You know, they didn't <laughs> explicitly say, aha, no pun mm -hmm. intended. They didn't explicitly say yeah. it's not going to have the sex in it. I have yeah. a feeling, though, ah. the fact that it's this broad re-release, uh, again, no mm -hmm. pun intended, that perhaps it's going to have not the hardcore stuff. Because there was a great amount of just casual nudity that I don't think, you know, short of, like, fuzzing it out, you're going to get rid of. It was, like, in frame. It was in scene with the main actors, background actors that were, you know, around the, the baths and whatever and kind of the debauchery going on that would then transition into those edited in uh, true, like, pornography scenes. But... I don't know. I don't know what your relationship is to the film Caligula, but as a young man, I heard about it and sought it out because of the pornography. Yeah. But then uh. as I was, you know, fast forwarding to get to the pornography, I accidentally got interested in the film. And so, but oh. then got distracted when the scene I was so searching for arrived. So I'm imagining right. to watch it in this way would huh. be very interesting because I, I wouldn't get distracted. I wouldn't, you know, but. Because it, it's a very '70s film. It, it, even though it was '79, the in the age of eighty, a lot of wide shots, a lot of lockdown shots, not a lot of movement. But with these extra <laughs> scenes that they have, this extra footage, I can imagine they could edit it more dynamically as well. Right. Uh, yeah. it, it's one thing to like edit out the pornography. It's something else to have other shots that you can go in to make it feel more, more, you know, more lived in and uh, more modern. I, that's the thing I'm hoping to see out of it. Wow. Huh. Here, I... Yeah, so you seriously can do a compare and contrast. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, mm -hmm. it, but, but for the sex, uh, you know, I know nothing about it. I've never seen it mm -hmm. except seen maybe some stills of those scenes. Really? Okay. I, I, okay. Have a, I think I've seen Helen Mirren naked at least in that film. I know she's been naked in a bunch of movies, but mm -hmm. that <laughs> comes to mind. Uh, I don't know. Wow, John, that gives me that's it makes me curious about it for that aspect yeah. of the fact that it may actually be a good movie. <laughs> right. Yeah. And a more twist of all with modern sensibilities. Maybe if you're re-editing yeah. it, you know, now in the 2020s, I can only imagine. I'm sure it's been it's not done now. They've been doing it the last couple of years. I would expect you're about to release it. But yeah, right. it's uh, like there's a lot of notable stuff in there. There's like I. I there's this great scene where they have this giant beheading machine out in this arena. Oh. They bury people up to their neck and then drive this big mm. saw blade across the... It's oh crazy God. stuff. that If you like horror movies and like it's suspense and tension, it's crazy stuff that's not... There oh. is stuff in it, like performances and the set pieces and things like that, that I would like mm -hmm. to just focus on and enjoy that as the film. So I'm really intrigued. <laughs> oh. Wow. D d All right. I, this has everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh Is that weird? Uh, you know, there, we've talked about this before. There's some strange, and not to say that this is an example of it, but this strange nexus between sex and horror that pervades mm -hmm. 1980s films, mm -hmm. maybe even started mm -hmm. in the 70s. But yeah. I, I don't really understand it. And the fact that I went from imagining uh, Helen Mirren's naked breast to now thinking about people getting by, headed by some saw-like contraption, mm -hmm. it makes mm -hmm. me feel queasy. Is this horrible? Well, can you imagine how yeah. I felt fast-forwarding through that to yeah. get to the part I was mm -hmm. looking for? Yeah. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> yeah. John's ready. He gets pants down. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, right. Well, you know what? If they cut out more sex, then... Uh, and maybe they are, but then that doesn't explain why why they've uh, introduced this as the popcorn bucket. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this is the official Caligula popcorn uh, bucket. So, so all yeah. so the new movie coming out, mm -hmm. it's all old scenes. It's not it's not a remake. There's nothing. There's no new. Um, well, it'll be new in the sense that it was discovered, but it's just mm -hmm. it's all the the same old. It stuff, It sounds right? like nothing shot new. All. Re right. recovered right. stuff barring the the one or multiple scenes i guess it said that actually has been reimagined by this artist which i can imagine like an animatic mm -hmm. or something we're thinking that's going to feel jarring maybe but we'll see what that is yeah i don't think it's an an i get more sense if it's something more animated and complete than an an animatic okay maybe so yeah but uh yeah okay. i don't know the uh, the new version of Caligula played this year at this year's uh, Cannes film festival reportedly to at least a few walkouts uh, those <laughs> oh. folks that remain those seem to uh, generally uh, give it a positive review Caligula, the ultimate cut, will premiere in theaters on August 16th. And after that, it'll be available digitally. Uh, okay. 
<laughs> Brandon says, years ago I went into an adult store and they had a display of Caligula DVDs by the register. Never seen it, but it's obviously raunchy. Uh, I, mean, I just think that's yeah. like, you know, it was still a thing, you know, that they would... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, Steve says, get your tickets early, cat. Yeah, do that. <laughs> I wonder why people were walking out though. I'm, I'm still thinking about that because I yeah. mentioned it is very brutal and it is very raw, even mm -hmm. if it doesn't have the pornographic content. So, okay, what are they walking out because of? Hmm. I mean, I mentioned yeah. there was beheadings. Uh, Maybe that's it. I don't it know. It's got to be the violence because most Maybe folks so. know the, yeah. the the you know the 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 associated with this being the sophisticated porn, but. Mm -hmm. So they came for the porn, and they saw people getting their heads cut off from a different angle. Yeah. <laughs> New footage. <laughs> ah. Steve also says, John just walks around with his stuff in his head? <laughs> you don't want to go in there in that head, Steve. Leave it's, it a, it's a mess in there. 